Hello, my name is Annika Nallis and in this tutorial I'm going to talk about how to keep the pattern correct while shaping. So if you're decreasing or increasing at the beginning or end of the row and then you're knitting um, a pattern, a stitch pattern in between. So in this specific tutorial we're going to do a lace pattern. Very simple lace pattern which I've got charted out here. Now you can find the charts that I use in this tutorial on the uh, blog that I'll link to below. I can't work out how I can upload this as a PDF for you to download. So I'll just put the charts in the blog post um, and hopefully you can follow along and use that to help you. But it's a very, very simple lace chart. If you're not used to reading charts or you don't know how to read charts, then I will put a link below to my uh, tutorial on how to read charts. It is a lot easier to work out um, how to keep the lace pattern correct while you're also uh, increasing or decreasing uh, if you know how to read charts. So it is worth learning how to do it um, just for this really. So this is the chart that we're knitting from. So I've actually knitted a little swatch. So I've done one repeat of that chart, uh, one eight row repeat, and then I've got three repeats of the charts horizontally. So I cast on 33 stitches. So that's the chart, that's what I've actually knitted out. So that's the pattern repeat in the middle, which is the same pattern repeat as here. And I've knitted up to row eight, so here. So this is when we're going to start doing the shaping. Um, I always keep two clear stitches at the beginning and the end of the row. So I will always knit two before I increase or decrease and then after the last increase or decrease I'll have two stitches, just two knit stitches at the end. So I keep two stitches in stocking stitch at the edges of the fabric uh, because it makes it easier to sew it up. So the only um, time I may not do that is if, for example, around the neckline. So around the neckline I tend to only keep one stitch um, outside the shaping. So I might just do knit one, decrease or increase knit to the last few stitches, increase, decrease, and then have one knit one at the end. So that's around the neckline, but say for example, armhole um, shaping or anywhere where I'm going to sew up, I would always um, keep two stitches clear. It just makes sewing up a lot easier. So I'm going to go from row nine of chart B. So you can find these charts, as I said, on my blog, which I'll link below. Now it's useful if you have the pattern written out because you can see from the pattern how best to alter the lace pattern to fit in with your shaping. So I'm going to just um, grab a pen and show you what I mean. So if we imagine the shaping starts here but if we imagine I'm looking at this chart most patterns will not chart out the shaping for you. So it might just say something like uh, knit to SSK working pattern to the last four stitches, knit two together, knit two. That's probably what most patterns would say, something along those lines. And then you have to work out how to keep the pattern correct. Now what I find the easiest way to do this is to work out, look at the chart and look at how you can divide up the pattern. So for example, in this pattern, you can see it's almost like two halves. Now in most lace patterns, a yarn over, which is a circle on this chart, is balanced out by a decrease. So you go yarn over, decrease, decrease, yarn over. Here they're actually next to each other. On this row there, there's a double decrease in between the two yarn overs. On some lace patterns, the decrease may be several stitches away from the yarn over, or it may even be on a later row. So obviously that makes it a little bit more tricky. But for this um, tutorial, I've kept it really, really simple. And then I may do another tutorial later for slightly more complex patterns. But what I would do on this one is I would simply draw a line down the center of the lace chart. So what I would do is anything up to that line, I would put a marker where that line is and anything up to that line, I would keep in stocking stitch till I get to that line. So that line would extend up like that. So once I get to that line, I would then move that line further in. So anything up to this red line, I'm going to just knit and decrease. Anything after that line, I'm going to keep the pattern correct. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Now when I get to here, I have to 
So let me just check. Yeah. Okay, so let me actually knit that so you can see what I'm actually doing when I'm knitting. So I'm going to start on row 9. So I'm going to knit 2. Then I'm going to do an SSK. So slip on knitwise. Slip a second stitch knitwise. Insert a left needle into the front of those two stitches and knit them together. And then I'm going to knit two and then I'm at the marker. So I'll just slip the marker across. Then I'm going to knit three. And now I'm just going to carry on with the pattern as before. So I got half a repeat, then a full repeat, and then half a repeat at the end. So I'm going to knit two together, yarn over, knit one, yarn over. I'm going to assume you know how to do these decreases. I'm not going to knit particularly slowly. I'm just going to knit quickly across. So if you need to pause. If you're doing this with me and you need to pause, then that's absolutely fine. So we're going to knit one, two, three. So now I'm at the marker again. So now outside, so between those two markers, I knitted the lace pattern as before. After this marker, I'm not going to do the lace stitches. I'm just going to do my shaping decrease. So I'm going to knit to the last four stitches. That means I'm going to knit two. Then I'm going to knit two together and then I'm going to knit two at the end. So now decrease one stitch at the beginning and one stitch at the end but I've got two clear stitches either side. So now I'm going to just purl back. Okay so let's start on row 11. So again I'm going to knit two at the beginning. So I don't have to think about the lace pattern now until I get to the marker. So this is what's so great about this. Until I get to the marker I can just focus on my decreases and I don't have to worry about the lace stitches. Knit 2, SSK. Uh, I always use SSK at the beginning of the row because it makes a decrease that leans to the left and then I use knit 2 together at the end of the row because that leans to the right. That way I get decreases that lean towards each other. So get to the marker, slip the marker across and then I'm going to follow the um, chart. Follow my lace pattern. So now I'm at the marker on the other side. So I'm going to take slip that marker across and now I'm going to stop the lace pattern. So no more lace stitches, just my decreases. So I'm going to knit to the last four stitches, which is just knitting one. Knit two together, knit two. I've actually just realized that on my chart I drew out here, I'm actually in decreasing on every row, not just on the right side rows. So um, let's do that on this row. So I'm going to, if I'm decreasing on the wrong side row, I'm going to purl two and then I'm going to purl two together. Slip the marker across and then I'm going to purl across to the last four stitches. So I'm going to pull to the last four stitches. That's where I am now. Now, the um, wrong side version of SSK, you can either do SSP or pull two together through the back loop. Pull two together through the back loop is probably easier. I prefer as pull two together through the back loop. I prefer SSP because it twists the stitches before you pull them together through the back loop. So an SSP is just slip on knitwise, slip on knitwise, and then put your left needle in from the left and just slip them back to the left hand needle and then you're going to pull them through the back loop. So obviously if you pull with the yarn at the front you need to take the yarn to the front. I pull with the yarn at the back. I must have made Norwegian pearl which is what I do. It's a little bit tricky um, with an SSP. And then I'm going to pull the last two stitches. Okay so let's do the next row. So now I'm actually coming to the point where I've got my marker. So now I'm going to have to move the marker in a bit further. So I can still actually get possibly the next decrease. So let's have a look. Let's just take that marker off. SSK. And then let's have a look and see where the next. So the next decrease is actually next lace stitch I've got to knit two together on a yarn over here it's not exactly like it is on this because I missed that row 10 I didn't do a decrease in row 10 so it's not quite matching up with this 
um, but I will change that for what's um, on the blog. Okay, so I'm going to do knit two together yarn over because I can still keep that correct. And then I'm going to um, knit till I get to the beginning of the repeat. So I'm actually going to move that marker now and put it at the beginning of the pattern repeat. And then I'm going to knit across the pattern repeat. So on this one, we're just doing one repeat. On most things, you would probably do more than one repeat. Now, we really want to move the marker to the end of that repeat, which is one, two, three, one, two, three, there. So um, I'm going to get another marker out. So let's put that marker on there. And then now I'm going to actually do this decrease as well because I can just about fit that in. And then I'm going to take that marker off, knit to the last four stitches, knit two together, knit two. Okay, so let's do two more rows. So I'm going to pull two and I'm going to pull two together. And then I'm just going to pull across to the other side to the last four stitches. Now on this pattern there are no lace stitches on the wrong side row. Obviously some patterns may have lace stitches on the wrong side row. So then you would work the lace stitches between the two markers. Last four stitches I pulled one too many. So I'm not going to do an SSP. And then knit the last, sorry, pull the last two. So now I'm only going to knit the pattern in between those two markers. So I'm going to knit just with my decrease at the beginning to the marker. So I'm going to knit to SSK. And then I'm going to knit to three. And then I'm going to do my pattern repeat between the markers. If I'm going too fast, you can just pause me whenever you need to, if you're following. But I just want to kind of focus on explaining exactly how the shaping works rather than you seeing every single stitch I knit slowly. So we're going to knit to the last four stitches, which is there. Knit two together. Knit two. So I'm now going to just do the wrong side row. I'm just going to pull to the end of the wrong side row. And then I'm going to show you what to do when we're increasing. Okay, so now we're going to increase. So it basically works in the same way. So that's chart C. So you can see here, as I'm increasing, I'm gradually filling in the stitches. Now this chart isn't quite correct uh, because I think I didn't do quite as many decreases in chart B. So I will correct this. Um, so the one that's posted in the blog is correct. It's the same as what I'm knitting. So at the moment, the marker is there. So I'm going to knit two. And then I'm going to make one. And then before the marker, there's a knit one yarn of it, knit two together. So that's going to take three stitches. So I can actually do that. So I got... I got four stitches before the marker now. So if I knit one, then I can actually do that knit two together yarn over knit one. And then pass the marker over. And then yarn it up, oh, yarn over, SSK. And then just knit to the other marker. So now I've knitted across to the other marker and now I've got those two. I'm going to increase here. I got room to do the yarn over. So I have room to do the yarn over SSK. Knit one and then 
make one and knit two. So I know I said outside the markers do stocking stitch and inside the markers do lace patterns. Well, I have got room now to do the lace stitches outside the markers, but I'm not moving my markers yet because between the markers, I can just do the repeat as normal. Outside the markers, I have to kind of think a little bit and look at how it fits in with my increases. So if you look on here, you can see that gradually I can fit in that whole repeat. So by the time I get row eight, I've got the full repeat fitted in. So I'm just going to do, I'm going to um, increase on this wrong side row as well. And then I'm going to do one more right side row to show you. So I don't normally like doing make one increases on every row because it does look a bit weird, but um, we'll do it here just to save a bit of time. So I got to the last two stitches, I'm going to make one and then I'm going to pull the last two stitches. So let's knit two, make one and then the next knit two to get on this row is, that's the yarn over from the previous row. So from if I go from the marker, I've got knit I've got two knit stitches, yarn over S, knit two together. So the yarn over and knit two together, the knit two together takes two stitches and turn into one, then a yarn over makes up for one of those decreases. So I need one, two, three, four stitches before the marker. Two, three, four. So if I knit two, then I can do knit two together. So I got two, four stitches before the marker, so I can knit two together, yarn over, knit two. Then I'm going to just knit the lace pattern as normal between the markers. So now I'm at the other marker. So now uh, the first one's a knit one, then I can do the yarn over, SSK. And then I want to knit to the last two stitches. So I can knit two. Make one, knit two. Okay, so as I have, when I get to the point where between the outside of the marker and the edge, I have enough for another repeat, I will move the markers out again. So um, this pattern repeat is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So when I got 10 stitches here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I will move the marker to there. And then I'll just got my two edge stitches and I'll do the same on this side. There I've only got one edge stitch. So it's two outside the first yarn over. Can you see that? So that's kind of how I do it. I will post this chart, these charts in the blog post so you can have a closer look at it. And if you have any questions, please ask below this video. Uh, it's easier if you ask below this video rather than asking um, in the blog post because I will see these questions better and it's easier to reply here than it is on the blog. So if you have any questions, just ask. And I will also post, post some other examples of some slightly more complicated lace patterns. I'll post the charts on how I would deal with that um, shaping. So I hope this was help, helpful um, and thank you very much for watching.